You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Under the Dome After Show. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm going to run a marathon. Oh, yeah. A marathon that will only be 10 miles long because that is the diameter of a certain round half structure. Hey, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are doing another Under the Dome after show. This is episode 102, The Fire. I am Matt Lieberman, and joining me, as always, is the lovely and talented Miss Jackie Borowski. Hey. Um. So... Yeah, lots to talk about this week after a very strong pilot episode. Uh, we got a couple of small answers, a little more development, um, but we still don't know a ton about what's going on under this dome at Chester's Mill, which my we, we, we were counting as we were watching. They, they said the phrase under the dome or under a dome or under some kind of dome like seven times in this episode. <laughs> And part of me wanted to pull my hair out, but not quite, because uh, I was enjoying the rest of it so very, very much. You know what's funny is you noticed that, but I only noticed uh, the one time, what was the only time I noticed it? When uh, Phil, mm -hmm. the newscaster guy. Phil that Bushy. Was, yeah, that was the only time that I noticed them saying under the dome. I guess it's because I was just accustomed to them talking about it or something, because he said the specific phrase under the dome. Yeah. We're under the dome. A dome? A dome, you say? C, a dome. <laughs> D, a dome. A ba, da, da. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, so I, I want to start by talking about uh, our, our buddy Dale Barbie. Uh, Dale's his real name. Just because we got flashbacks at the top of the episode. Yes. And... Uh, we since the show is written by brian k vaughn who wrote for lost there's some comparison to be made between the two series and i'm wondering if we're going to get flashbacks at the top of every episode um from different characters they weren't like interspersed throughout like lost was but it was still important to his story we it's saw it's good for answering questions that answered part of our question about how um julia's husband died yeah how peter died and whether or not Dale is is as bad a guy as he could potentially be, it wasn't it wasn't cold blooded murder. He killed him in self defense, right. you know. Or so he thought because he realized the gun didn't have any bullets in it. Uh no 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 no. Oh yes, that's right. He he found out that Peter's gun had no yes. bullets in it. Uh, so Peter was never going to shoot him. Uh, and this whole struggle was for naught. You know what's interesting? I read this uh, article in Entertainment Weekly that was because i feel the characters in the book and um for those of you who were giving us suggestions as to whether or not you like that we haven't read the book or um we like the one suggestion of one person doesn't read it one person does yeah um it, it, we we got some great comments this week on itunes and uh since i had not started reading <laughs> the book yet i was going to uh and and jackie has potentially you, you're gonna read the book you're but thinking. i'm gonna read it slowly because i actually like being surprised sure so i'm interested in knowing the differences but i don't want to read to the end and then know it and then feel even if they don't even if they change the end i don't want to feel like i already know what's going like you're waiting yeah yeah i completely agree but um i think that'll add a level of perspective so like from what has aired so far versus the book what is what is different um i don't I don't want to get too heavy into it because there are so many differences. Okay. But Angie's not alive what? from the beginning. Wait, what? In the book. Yeah. She dies. He beats the crap out of her and then she dies. Oh! Yeah. What? Yeah, spoiler. But that but so far she uh I mean, 
the actress is Britt Roberts Rob, yeah Britt Robertson yeah the actress is billed for farther in so oh, I don't know thank god we don't know oh my what's god what's gonna happen to her now on the I'm so much more worried I was already worried now I'm even more worried we're gonna get to her but I, I wanna I wanna talk I wanna talk Dale oh I was just so oh, yeah. referring to Barbie he is much darker in the book okay. I think than he is in the series and Entertainment Weekly post uh, pointed out that because you have Steven Spielberg as a producer on this, and you have Stephen King, and Stephen King tends to be darker, and yeah. Steven Spielberg tends to see more of a silver lining at the end of things. Even when he has sad subject matter, it's still, it still is hopeful. Yeah. And I think that they were saying that, and I agree with this, that adding Stephen King with Steven Spielberg on this type of show, it, it gives it more of a hopeful edge than when you read the books, you're just kind of like, oh man, this is so dark. Yeah. But on the series, I feel the characters um, are more complex with the exception or of Junior. Yeah, who is just an unlovable creep in that one too. Yeah. Well, I mean, even less because he beat his girlfriend to death in the book. Oh, they're not dating in the book. They're just oh, friends. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Junior, you crazy, squirrely word I don't want to say. Anyway, uh, um, uh, I'm trying not to swear, but he so, so warrants yeah. it. Yeah, he does. He so warrants it. So uh, Dale remembers in his struggle during his fitful nightmares that uh, his dog tags, Peter grabbed his dog tags off of his neck during their struggle. And uh, he wakes up in Julia's home, and shes uh, they have, like, a slightly tense scene. He's got his shirt off. She's talking about her dead husband. Uh, and uh, he's like, oh, I'm sure I left them out by the, by the car. I'll, I'll, I'll find them. And uh, Julia is, is – I love that scene with the, uh, with the ball, bouncing the ball against the dome. Yes. Because it's, it's one of those very, very simple but – uh, effective visual tricks yes. that make you feel like the dome is real. Right, right. Uh, you know, because you, you see ball hit nothing, come back, they catch it. Uh, and uh, she's more and more frustrated. And then she made that comment about how he said you should probably, you should take your clothes off if you want them to look at you. She's like, I tried that an hour ago. And he had the same look on his face that I did. It was like, did she? Yeah, I. that's what I I was like. I'm, I can't tell if this is a joke or not, but I think that's interesting because it points to her character as a reporter where you're like, I'm not sure if this is false or true. Yeah, well, she's just one of the, she's just like a very headstrong kind of like, you know, knows herself kind of a woman. She doesn't care. She wants to get to the truth of things and she wants these people to, to notice her. So she's going to do whatever she has to do to get the job done and get the story. And, you know, she did something very, very smart. She saw they were talking on the radio, and she went immediately to the radio station. So we weren't sitting on the fact that it's a dome for several episodes. Right. So thank you, Julia Shumway. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no security at the radio station. There's the no security <laughs> at what is likely the most technologically advanced thing in town, unless there's a secret government or alien base or something that's creating this dome somewhere. Anyway... The mo logically, it is the most technologically advanced yes. thing in town. Yes. Uh, and there's no security whatsoever. No. Um, you can just come in and broadcast, and they don't seem to... They, I mean, they protest a little bit, but... Yeah. But I think Phil, Phil Bushy's too busy being cool with his sunglasses. He's too busy being cool with his sunglasses and his Urban Outfitters outfit, and, you know, Dodie's too busy being smart and kind of a loner, I guess. Um... Yeah, and I guess kind of like protective of Phil. But Dale goes to fetch his dog tags, uh, and he goes to the cabin, which actually has a sign that says the cabin on The cabin's on it. the best. The cabin is so awesome. It's So far, it's my favorite location because yeah. it has a wide variety of antlers, and it's just called the cabin. It, it, like There's a sign that just says the cabin, not somebody's cabin, not no. Joe's cabin or Ted's cabin. It's just it's the, the cabin. It's the cabin. And it, like we were saying, it would be a great like underground bar like you've got this little rickety cabin outside and then you open the door and then just inside is just this big underground space yeah which would be super cool but that's not what happened instead crazy mf and junior shows up um ready Wait, for apparently there was gambling in the cavern though the cabin though 
because of the cards yeah uh, well, it was like it looked like a gambling table well it there might have been gambling it's also like cards i was thinking about it as we saw it it's one of those very effective simple uh production design things to be like there's a mess so you just open a deck of cards and throw them that's true. and it makes it look like there's more of a mess it's the same way that like if newspapers blowing in the breeze in in a in a town it looks deserted or dirty you know um so I don't know if there was gambling, but it could be. Junior shows up ready for war, He uh, and, and we'll get more into his scenes with Angie in a bit. But he, he's talking to Dale, saying, you, you screwed my girlfriend right here. It looks like she put up quite a fight. She <laughs> belongs to me. Oh, I hate him. He's such a creeper. I hate him so much. And I know that he's not going to die for at least like a few episodes because we need people to hate. Because we don't. Qu someone compared the level of. I was reading a blog, and someone compared the level of hate. I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones. Yes. The, the level to Joffrey. of hate to Joffrey. But I I agree because he's completely irredeemable, and he's nuts. Yeah. And he's nuts, and he's wearing one of only. Why is it that only uh, Rennie men get to wear leather jackets in this town? <laughs> oh, no. Jim has a has a red leather jacket. He has a black leather jacket that he does not deserve. He does. He has not earned that jacket. He is not cool enough. Um, he is. He is crazy, and he's dumb. Picking a fight. Picking a fight with Dale, uh, who tells him that he'll basically kill him next time. Um, and uh, then Dale goes off to fight the fire, which we're going to get into uh, in a bit. First, I would like to talk about uh, a movie that uh called the adventures of serial buddies that the founders of after buzz tv maria menounos and kevin undergaro released earlier this year it is now available on itunes and on serialbuddies.com 4.99 to rent 5.99 to buy it's a really funny indie comedy it's dark it's twisted it's kind of like dexter meets dumb and dumber <laughs> and uh, it's it's packed with celebrity cameos. Uh, Maria's in it. Kathy Lee Gifford is in it. Beth Bears. Christopher Lloyd. Henry Winkler is in it. Christopher McDonald. Uh, Artie Lang is in it. And uh, it's a, it's a really funny movie that is a is available now online. We here at AfterBuzz put out around 60 plus shows a week, which is insane. And we're in the middle of building a third studio so we can put out even more great free content for everyone on the internet. A lot of people have asked us, hey, how can we help give back? I love your shows. I listen to, you know, eight or ten of them. Like, how can I give back? The one way you can do that is by downloading Serial Buddies uh, or renting it. The money goes right back into AfterBuzz. It keeps the lights on. It keeps us broadcasting and keeps us talking about great shows like Under the Dome. And you're getting a great movie in the deal. So that's that. Let's talk. Mar uh, uh, our 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 dear sheriff passed away. I feel bad for Duke because I feel like he kind of gets the crappy end of things at the end of the last episode. Yeah, and then his house is destroyed in this episode, so it's like he can't even win in death. He has no luck whatsoever. Yeah, uh, and uh, his his deputy, uh, Miss Martinez. Mm -hmm is now thrust into the center of Chester's Mill high stakes politics and crime and danger. Um, and uh, she's she's mourning her boss. We have that scene in the morgue where we're introduced to Reverend Lester Coggins. Uh, Reverend Creeper. Reverend Creeper. So many effing <laughs> creepy people in this dang town, I swear. When he came in, I thought he was the morgue director because... I, I don't know. He, you know, it's like he's coming in to, to where the dead bodies are. So I assume yeah. that he was a morgue director. Well, I think that's, it's a, it's a town so small that he's he runs. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, why are morgue directors always creepy? And then I was like, oh, he's a priest. Yeah. But he's still creepy. And he's like, he looks like a Nosferatu. Yes, um, definitely. Mostly because he is on drugs, which is what Big Jim Rennie has been doing secretly uh, in the town. It's what all the petroleum is for. Uh, now, I don't necessarily know specifically what drugs require petroleum. I'm going to take a stab and say methamphetamine. Say methamphetamine. I would, I would assume. Because it's probably the least dangerous in terms of like importing, because he doesn't have to import actual like cocaine or heroin. You know, he can just brew it. 
Plus, his face looks like facesofmeth.com. So yes. I just. Yes. The two just coalesced. Reverend Lester <laughs> has a meth face. <laughs> and he's totally whacked out of his mind uh, when when Martinez and Jim Rennie bring the body of poor Sheriff, De- uh, poor Sheriff Duke to uh, to the church, to the coroner's area, coroner's section. And uh, Martinez, is le- is uh, she leaves. Jim and Lester have it out. Jim takes Lester. He slams him up against the wall. How can you be using our stuff, you big idiot? You're going to get us caught. Um, I, I want to talk about the, the union of, of Lester, Jim, and Duke. So Duke let this happen because it, the, the town needed the money. I'm assuming so, yeah. He, right. They wanted to save the town, they were saying. They so. wanted to save the town. Lester tells Jim, that wasn't your motive. Your motive wasn't to save the town. It's to make money or to have power. And and based on the few like moments we've seen with Big Jim where he's not playing Mr. Councilman, uh, I'd agree with that. You know what's interesting, though? I find Big Jim, whereas I find Junior irredeemable. Right. Junior's just a total creeper. He's a shit. Yeah, he's a Joffrey. Yes. And Big Jim is really interesting in the way that I actually do feel like he cares about the town and he cares about certain people in the town. He obviously doesn't want to show uh, Linda, Linda Martinez. Yes. He doesn't want to show her um, his, his like darker side. He waits till she leaves the room before he slams Lester and he, he saves the town in the end of the episode and he makes this big speech about coming together. And I really, I really, I don't know if we were supposed to, but I really believe him. I believe that he's one of these guys who it's like he has a really bad – he's like a mob boss almost. Yeah. Where it's like you have this really bad like underside, but you secretly – that you keep secret, but then you really care about your family on the same level almost. It's funny. Uh, I, I, I do an after show for a show called Defiance, which is on sci-fi, and there's a character named Rafe McCauley played by Graham Greene who's very, very similar – in that he's a family man who's developed a business. He's one of the wealthiest people in town. Uh, he's on the city council, cares about the town, but he's also got some gangster in him. Mm-hmm. And and it, I'm wondering which side will win out when it yes. comes to Jim. Yes. Because he definitely has a lot of both. And, and I agree. I think he does care about the town, but I think that when push comes to shove, he cares about himself more. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see more of that as the season goes on. So Linda leaves L- Linda leaves, and she's talking with uh, her fellow deputies. Uh, Frank, who is her brother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, he's Rusty's brother, and Paul, who is kind of losing it. And when I say kind of losing it, I mean he's lost it. <laughs> Dude's lost it. Paul goes, Paul goes significantly crazier as the episode goes on. Yeah. Well, he's like he's going AWOL. He's not he's not recognizing Linda's authority. She wasn't officially named sheriff, which like when we get to the scene with the uh, with the last will and testament, I would have thought that it would have said in there, you're the new sheriff. Yes. I want Linda Martinez to be the new sheriff. She's the only person who can succeed me. Like if I were writing a will, I would put that in there. First of all, unless they have to do an election to make her sheriff, I'm not sure. True, but he could at least extend his support for her candidacy. That's true. That is true. He's kind of left her. He left her with a house, but not much else. Nah, she doesn't have a house anymore. And now she doesn't <laughs> even have a house. So what is she supposed to do now? So Paul is going off. He says, "This is the end of days." We don't know anything about the stone. People are going to riot, and why shouldn't they? They should be scared. I'm going to go run off and be emo and come back (laughs) with a bunch of assault rifles. He has a cache of automatic weapons. Which one would wonder where he has access to all of this? Oh, he buys them. He buys them. He buys these weapons and he stores them for his own use because he's been waiting for the end of days because he's a (laughs) nutbag who waits for the end of days with a bunch of guns. Which, frankly, if the end of days were to come, I'd be happy to have one of those on my side at least until I had a few of those assault rifles. But now we know not only is he nuts, but those guns are in play. 
because they can't necessarily there aren't enough cops to say okay one of these assault rifles for every cop right those assault rifles i guarantee are going to cause so much trouble guns 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 always lead to trouble the assault rifles no different so um linda is trying to figure all this stuff out She's trying to sort out. Everyone's trying to sort out who's in charge. We hear that a few times in this episode. Who's in charge? Mm -hmm. We don't know. I mean, Big Jim is the only member of the council who's still in town. So ostensibly he's in charge, but no one said. Uh, you know, Linda is, was the closest to the sheriff, but she does not outrank the other deputies. So she's not in charge. You know, uh, Barbie has, has rallied the town together a couple times and saved some lives, but he's not in charge. Julie is definitely not in charge, even though uh, she's the first one on the front lines trying to figure stuff out, and she's probably the most active character. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this power vacuum that I feel like we're just heading towards a series of really, really rough power struggles and coups, and like it's going to be rebellion, utter rebellion, and anarchy under the dome. I, I take it by your silence that you agree. I do agree. Okay. I do agree. Because I feel like if you're going to set this up, it'd be, we wouldn't be watching it if we thought they were all going to sip tea and hold hands under the dome. Sure. Although, I mean, I wouldn't mind at least like a three-minute montage of hand-holding and tea <laughs> sipping uh, to a great classic rock song. But this is not that show. So, uh, Jim tells uh, Reverend Coggins, er, so so Linda goes in the scene with the uh, with the deed or the last will and testament. That scene was interesting as well because we I'm starting to because this is supposed to represent like everywhere America. Yeah, and I'm starting to realize just how I guess lackadaisical the town is, how uh, small town it is that you can just walk in anywhere. And his explanation is just like, oh, I was looking for the will, and in in a big city like LA, you'd be like, no, seriously, you walked into the police office, stole this, like open this, like yeah. that is a big problem. She's just like, oh, you found the will. Well, thanks for your help. You know, like, yeah. well, I and mean, then in the scene later when he, when Lester is in the house, it's the same kind of small town reaction. Oh, of course you went in to go get his suit. Yeah. I was just looking for a suit. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking about those keys that mysteriously went missing. <laughs> That's weird. And I don't want to say, like, like Linda, she's not in a perfect place right no, now. No, she's very grief-stricken. Yeah, she's grief-stricken, and there's a freaking dome that fell the day before. So she's not necessarily in her most investigative mode. I did I did catch a twinge of suspicion at the tail end of the deed scene. Yes. Um, but, yeah, he was rifling through the stuff, and then he tells Lester, you know, the documents aren't here. You're going to have to break into this house. And, of course, Lester, in a meth-fueled haze, <laughs> sides, ah Because this is who you send. Yeah, this, this is, is who, who you, send. you always send the guy on drugs to pick up the evidence, Jim. Um, and he he's like, ha -ha, I'm going to steal this cigar. Great. I'm going to light this document on fire. And Lester throw it. is a genius. Lester like, is a genius. First off, if the house hadn't burned down, someone would notice that his fingerprints, he was throwing things everywhere. He was having a throwing things party. So true. The fingerprints. I didn't even think about fingerprints. Yeah, Lester just goes in and he's like, ah, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to throw everything around, yeah. even though th that uh, Big Jim has indicated that she's eventually going to head to the house because yeah, it's, it's hers, hers now. now. And so he's throwing things around. He finally finds this thing and, yeah, throws it in a trash can full of paper. Yeah. No, he's an idiot of the highest caliber and he was of the highest caliber. Yes. I love puns. And uh, the house is suddenly ablaze. Everyone's gathering around it. Oh my God, what's happening? Jim, and this is where I say he is selfish and he's ultimately a bad person. He hears, he hears Lester screaming from the house and he doesn't say Jack. He doesn't say anything. He, he's, he's trying to wait it out. He's hoping that Lester dies before yeah. anyone gets to him. And then, of course, Linda hears it. She runs in. She saves him because she's awesome and she can handle it. And she can. She she learned from from Rusty how to survive in a fire, even though she kept <laughs> touching knobs. Even though a after you go in the house, 
Do you, how can you expect any of the knobs to be less hot than the hot knob on the front door? We'll we'll bring we'll blame it on grief. We'll blame it on grief. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, I I second I second that uh, Dale rallies everybody and they're they're trying to stop this fire with all this water bucket brigade hoses everywhere but it's it's spreading and and under this dome uh, it, it hasn't rained in weeks and if the fire spreads they're all doomed but here's the interesting thing we know from earlier in the episode that water it's Water can come in very small, very, very yeah. small amounts. Very, very small. small amounts. Very small amounts. And so I'm also wondering, someone asked a question on YouTube that was, are they trapped in here and their oxygen is trapped? You know, there's no oxygen moving yeah, in and out. Yeah. But I would suppose that it would move in and out just as the water moves in and out. And I would suppose the smoke would move in and out just I as agree. that. In small amounts, in but... In small amounts, but at, at, a, at a, a subatomic level, mm -hmm. or even just, just at an atomic level, they should be able to move through the dome freely, you know, because there's not really any mass. There's not really any mass to the air and to the smoke, or at least not enough that I think would be a problem. But also, even if that wasn't the case, the trees, the trees inside the dome take in carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. So there would, on some level, even if it was limited, be some recycling of the air, I think. Um, so we're 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 at this uh, we're at this massive gathering, Chester's Mill folks. Water dome party. Water dome party, yes. And looks like all hope is lost. Big Jim Rennie had driven away a while ago, and we're like, oh great, Big Jim runs away to go check on his propane and his drugs. But no, he comes back with the uh, with the bulldozer that he found earlier uh, with the guy who was about to blow himself up touching the dome, trying to dig under it. Mm -hmm. A few people tried digging this week, but like the kids were digging a hole Oops. nowhere near the side of the dome. <laughs> they were just digging a round hole, <laughs> which I'm gonna chalk that up to kids are stupid. <laughs> Um, but they did say that the dome goes down pretty deep, even though <clears throat> said hole was not near the dome. Right. Okay. So maybe it was, it was nearish to the dome, whatever. Okay. So people are trying to dig under it. We've gotten that out of the way. And as we saw, uh, well, I'll, I'm not going to mention the previews from next week until we get behind a spoiler wall because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Um, but Big Jim Rennie comes in. He bulldozes the house getting rid of the remaining evidence potentially and uh stopping the fire big heroes big heroes linda and jim who are going to be competing for control of the town going i forward. think barbie might come up on that too he has some good military people were listening the police officers were listening to him i yeah. was noticing that he's like you go get this you go do that and he sends the police officers off and i was like they, they had no problem listening to random out-of-town guy telling them what to do. Yeah. He has a sense of authority about him. But I don't think he necessarily wants the job. No. I think he's the kind of guy who will act when the moment requires it. Yeah. But he does not want to be in charge. Because he's cool. Because he's we learned. so cool. <laughs> we, That's we what learned we learned this. from Joe McAllister. <laughs> That's how we know he's not from there. Because he's so damn cool. Uh, so cool that he can almost put out fires just by touching them. Not, <laughs> not quite. So at the at the end of the episode, and we're going to get back to some of the other characters in a second, but uh, Paul goes off once again, and he is like, we are all doomed, and this smoke is in here now, and it is not leaving, and I'm crazy. <laughs> Time to shoot the dome. And he shoots it twice. One of the bullets... Shoo, passes right through Frank's chest, killing Frank. And Frank is dead. We that only, was a shocker. I know. We only really just got to learn and like Frank. <laughs> and now Frank's dead. Are we going to have a death every week? Is this what I have to come to expect, Jackie? I'm, I, I think so. Damn yeah. it. Yeah. I and it's always going to be the characters you like. It's not going to be Junior. Which is exactly like, <laughs> again, Game of Thrones. They only kill characters that you like. It's true. It's true. Um, 
I just want to take a quick second and talk about iTunes. Uh, thank you to those of you who have reached out on YouTube and on iTunes and on Twitter, uh, letting us know how you like the show. Uh, if you could, please uh, rate us five stars, please. Uh, and uh, give us your comments. Let us know what you're thinking of the show, what you think is happening, what's going to happen, and what you think of us and what we could do to better improve your Under the Dome after show experience. We are currently number one on AfterBuzz TV, and we would like to keep that. Yeah. We'd oh. like to thank you. We'd like to thank you for being awesome listeners and for subscribing and tuning in to us. And uh, rating and commenting uh, helps us cement that position and I'd love to see us stay on top through the whole run of the show I think it's possible I believe in you viewers and listeners <laughs> and so does Jackie Browski I do I'm not saying much but I do she does <laughs> she's nodding in agreement you can't, I am you I can't see I need to remember to speak and nod it's at okay. the same time I'm, I, it's hard I'm blonde there's issues with the doing two things at one time no I, I disagree you're, you're, you're fantastic okay it's time to talk about our least favorite person in the entire world. It's time to talk about Junior. <sighs> Dick. Just such a <sighs> evil, creepy, amoral, heartless, evil, evil, evil dick. <sighs> I know. Hate him and his huge face. Okay, to me, I said this earlier. I was like, he looks like Andy Samberg, only, and he kind of sounds a little bit like Andy Samberg. A little bit. And so it makes me sad because I'm like, why is Andy Samberg so mean and evil? It's because last my that's my boy bombed at the box office, and so did uh, Hot Rod. Yes. I didn't even know Hot Rod existed. Exactly. Thank you. That proves my point. We were wondering, though, what Junior does in his spare time between, like, torturing people and beating them up. Right? Because he just seems like he goes around town, like, walking like a jerk. Yeah. He'll just, like, he just emerges from the tree line <laughs> looking creepy all the time. So, like, where is he? Is he just, like, counting, like, the notches in his Bowie knife? Is he stabbing stuff? Is he practicing fighting on trees? We don't know. And no one's, you know, no one, I wonder if anyone's like, hey, Junior's acting especially weird out there. Or yeah. they're just, they're like, oh, that's Junior. Yeah. Well, no one keeps tabs on him. That's true. And no one's been keeping tabs on poor Angie. Who's, not even her brother. Not even her brother, who's so concerned with, oh, mapping the dome with trigonometry. This is super important to the overall survival of everyone in town. What about his dang old sister? <laughs> I'm sorry, but like that just uh, that's that's got to be weird when your sister doesn't show up. And then maybe you talk to her boyfriend and say, "Hey, where's my sister?" And then he'll say something like, "She's at the grocery store <laughs> getting me groceries because she's mine." And then you'll be like, Junior oh, is a terrible liar, though. I know. He's a terrible liar. If he said that, you would be like, Junior, is she really at the grocery store? Yes, she's at the grocery store. We're going to have ice cream sandwiches. Or did you skin her and wear her as a hat? N no. <sighs> she's at the gro grocery store. Ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> because she's mine. Uh, like, you, you knew. I mean, we knew. But Angie definitely knew. When uh, when he said that he had killed Barbie and he's got like a black eye and a bloody lip, right. that he was definitely lying, mostly because if he had, he would have burst in and he would have shoved his head in her face. Yes, because he that's like that's the kind of move he would make. But like a weak person lies like that. Um, I want to talk about the first scene between the two of them when she's trying to get out, and mm -hmm. I thought for a second she was gonna get yeah. out. And it would be like, great, this isn't a storyline. This isn't this horrific storyline. No, we can have her out and tell everyone that Junior's crazy until he retreats into the trees and then just becomes <laughs> somebody stalking the town, killing people one by one. Which... Picking them off from the outside of the dome. Exactly. Or the outside, outskirts of Outskirts the of the dome. Eventually figuring out how to climb up the dome <laughs> and then jump down like some kind of flying squirrel and stab people. That is my this is dream. This the alternate, alternate junior storyline. This is my dream version of the junior storyline. Uh, but no, Angie, he locked the outside door before he came into her chamber, and then he chains her to the bed. 
Because uh, he's an expert creeper. Because he's an expert creeper who just wants to make her like like she was. This dome has screwed up, screwed her mind. Uh, which, like, he totally got the... Uh, I mean, he is crazy. But he got the timeline wrong. He's like, you, you, the dome came down and then you pushed me away. No, she pushed you away and then hours later, unrelated, the dome came mm-hmm. down. And only a crazy person would connect the two. And he is the utmost crazy person. Yeah. Uh, um, he's that total, like, stalker ex-boyfriend guy. He's worse! I mean, he's stalker ex-boyfriend plus, like, just a million pounds of crazy. <laughs> he just wants to kill everything that's not her. But at the same time, she wants he wants to kill her, I think, on some level. And he did in the book. Sorry. Really quickly. So Angie, uh, she makes this play in that first scene. She she says, uh, you know, that like me and Barbie, we he screwed my brains out and I loved it. And I was really, really concerned for her in that moment. And I'm like, he is going to beat you up. He's- she should have just been like, I love you, Junior, so much. You're the best thing I've ever had, wah, wah, wah. And then maybe he would have let her out. I don't think he would have let her out that way either. I think he, he would have... Uh, he would have said, and that's why I'm keeping you here. I'm going to keep you safe. Let's have consensual sex now, Ugh, please. No. No. Boring consensual sex, because how boring was that sex last oh, week? So but um, sh- but getting back to it. Um, so, like, she's she's antagonizing him, and I'm wondering what she, what she was thinking in that moment, what she thought she was going to get out of it. Because he wasn't going to let her go because of that. She was probably just so angry at him, you know, at that point. It's yeah. like just saying things just to make him angry because she has no way of hurting him right now. That's true. And that's probably what it is. I thought maybe on some level she was like, if if I get him angry enough, he'll go after Barbie and then people will start asking questions about that's Junior. That's another good And then plan. maybe ask where I am. Because her brother's not going to ask. No, because her brother... <laughs> is too busy hanging out with Ben, who's too worried about whether or not he's ever going to make out with Mila Kunis, which you won't, Ben. Your hat is stupid. Um, and you're a child, Ben. All of Joe's friends are idiots, and it reminds me... Well, it doesn't help that Joe is kind of like a genius. He's yeah. like a technological savant. Right, but maybe people aren't his like his greatest thing. Because if he if if he understood people, he would understand. My sister comes <laughs> home every night, especially during times of trouble. Interesting. <laughs> I should investigate that. No. Um, all right. So I think we're wrapped on on Junior and yes. Angie so far. So let's let's talk Joe and his discovery this week. So we learned, as we said, that the dome is semi permeable. Mm-hmm. Um, Water can be let through just in little bits, like like a sieve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's how the air is coming through. I don't know if this is something that was also in the book or if it's something that was written it in. It is. Okay. It's semi-permeable. Okay. Yeah. So what would it take, how much force would it take to pierce the dome with something more solid? I, I mean, we don't know. Obviously force doesn't matter mm-hmm. so then because a plane hit it so yeah uh lasers can't damage it we don't know what kind of energy it is it feels solid but it is it is semi-permeable i don't know how where i was like i was like can they somehow communicate through gas i'm like that's stupid but that was like the only thing that came to my head i don't it, it explains how they're able to breathe it explains how they're able to breathe, not much else. And hopefully we'll get more answers next week. But I feel like if the entire series, if we're going to have this show go beyond one season, uh, if this entire series takes place under the dome, cl- like clues about the dome, real facts about the dome are going to be the things we get the least on this show. I Probably, yeah. And it's going to be very, very frustrating. Like Lost, it's going to be. It's going to be a lot like Lost. Yeah. Uh, except, you know, with Lost, you had a ship show up in season four, you know, and you had a second half of the of the plane show up in season two. So, I don't know. Uh, and uh, 
two characters that we had never seen before in season three. We're getting <laughs> off topic. We're getting way off topic because I love Lost and I love Brian K. Vaughn and Why the Last Man is genius. So uh, Joe discovers that the dome is 10 miles wide, mm -hmm. 10 miles wide, uh, containing the all of the town and then some of the nearby lake. And I'm wondering, maybe is the generator of the dome in the lake? Who knows? These are all questions that, that don't matter because we're not going to find out forever. Uh, Nori is being a brat. Um, she's stealing while Barbie is stocking up on cigarettes. We definitely know she wasn't going to camp. No, she was going to maybe like re-education camp or like <laughs> military camp or something. Uh, but yeah, when when uh, when her parents, when uh, Alicia and... They kind of dubiously say camp. Yeah, they're like, uh, we're taking her to camp. camp. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, like one of them says, oh, we're taking her to camp. <laughs> It's like so completely obvious, and like Jim is like, hey. and he's like super suspicious. Not just because they're out of town, but because like they they could have said that in a way easier way, a more a more normal yeah. way that wasn't just like camp, camp. Um, <laughs> it's like a catch-all word for like bad mysterious things. Camp, camp. <laughs> um, and after her like episode last week, I thought for sure that Nori. When she's like, I know what's going, what's going yeah, to happen. Yeah, she would have known something from exactly, that. Exactly, but no, I don't think so. No. Um. So we have a moment between Nori and Joe when and they. I wonder if it's like a psychic moment because they both had that experience. Right. I mean, part of it I think is like is like cute girl, cute boy, <laughs> who is Instagramming instead of helping put out the effing fire, okay, Joe. He's recording. He's video recording. I know he wants evidence or whatever, but it's like, well, okay. It's Instagram. Better. Instagram has video now. Okay, now it does. Instagram has video now, but <gasps> like he should have been helping put out the fire. And why wasn't anyone mad at him? These are important questions that need to be answered for logic's sake. Maybe he's just like, you know how everybody's like, oh, Junior, he's so lovably crazy or just crazy. Um, maybe he's just like, oh, that's Joe. He's so lovably nerdy that he does. Yeah, nerdy, that's Joe. He's so lovably nerdy that he things. won't help us put out a fire <laughs> that could end the town during essentially wartime. That silly Joe. All um, I have to say is this video recording better become important later on. Yes. Uh, that will make it worthwhile. Yeah. But here's the thing. So Nori and Joe are the only people in town who had the kind of vision moment, the seizure. Right. Pink stars are falling. Pink stars are falling in lines. And Nori, I don't remember, is she adopted? Or was she, uh, was there a surrogate involved in her birth? I have no idea. I, we're gonna have to find out, because if she's adopted, or maybe even if she is a surrogate, uh, if like that sperm came from Joe and Angie's dad, what if they're like twins that were separated at birth. This is slowly becoming Game of Thrones again. No. And then they have a relationship, but they don't know they're really twins. Well, Stephen King, it could be, it's, it's, I mean, that's a horrific thing to discover that you've been sleeping with your sibling. You know, <laughs> that could be a thing. But I'm just saying, we need to start thinking of what are the links between these two people? Because the, while it could have just been an innocent moment of like, yeah, hot girl. Because especially because he... Uh, and then Angie should have it too, right? Well... She's been underground book, this whole she time. she does have a seizure. Angie? Yes. Whoa. See, this... All these things are happening. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Jackie, you know more than me. I am so I, I actually don't because there's the... The series is a completely different animal. And I, I, I actually like the series better. Cool. Um... Any other lingering thoughts or questions before we head into some brief uh, predictions? Um, my only last lingering thought was as you're watching this whole kind of mess go down between the fire and the shooting. Yeah. The officers, like, I know they can't help anybody, but they're basically just standing on the corner staring. They're yeah. not even patrolling anymore. Oh, the ones outside yeah. the door. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what are these guys doing? All this crazy stuff is happening, and they're just like, Meh. They're better than like the the guards at the Queen in 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 England and yeah. Buckingham, Buckingham Palace who aren't supposed to react to anything. 
They're not like radioing anybody. Like, like there's a fire inside the dome and all the people might die. And also small trace amounts of smoke are getting through the dome. You know, none of that. They're, they're just hanging out. They're just extras. They're just earning their rate, uh, which like, come on outside people. And I'm wondering how much of the outside are we ever going to get to see? Probably not. Any. No, I mean we saw that the you know the top half of the their the former owner of the new dog the yeah. top half has been dragged, dragged away. away so we know they're like cleaning it up I guess or cleaning it up or there's cannibals in the trees <laughs> potentially maybe they're Junior's real parents <laughs> I don't know let's get into predictions and now. Your After Buzz TV predictions. Jackie Borowski, lay it on me. Thoughts? I predict Junior's real parents are cannibals. No. Um, I I do think that there is going to be a big power play. Yeah. And I think that... Um, I think that it's going to be between Big Jim, who represents kind of uh, the government i guess mm -hmm. and then linda who represents like police force martial law yeah martial law and then uh barbie who is more like who's just our hero kind of military law but not really he's yeah. he's kind of he's like the renegade hero yeah he's the anti-hero our, our flawed moral center yeah and i feel like the theme is going to be because we saw the town come together in this episode, but we also saw pieces of it fall apart. Yeah. So I think it's it's going to be uh, a, a struggle to see it, does the town stay together? Where do they fall apart? Are they are they going to coalesce or fight each other? Yeah. Basically. Okay. I uh, so based on what we saw briefly from the scenes for next week, we know that Julia and Junior go underground and the dome oh, is down right there in some kind of catacombs <laughs> um yes in some kind <laughs> the catacombs for so, the town exactly the you know the old town catacombs <laughs> that is the tea drinking scene that we're missing exactly where they're discussing the history of the town catacombs and how they were used to help fight off the british in the war of 1812 not really because this is the pacific northwest and that totally wouldn't have happened but it's still, uh, I, I don't think that for the series they're doing that. I thought it was like wherever USA. Wherever we want it to be? Yeah. Well, all I know is uh, that Nori and her parents drove from Brentwood. So, like, they're coming from the West Coast. I assume that they were driving north. Oh. That's just, that, that's, an, that's an assumption on my part. Um, but, yeah, we see that the dome is way down below the ground. Hopefully, Julia... Being below ground finds a certain Angie chained to her bed. And also, how is Angie how are Angie's clothes still fresh? How is she being fed and watered? And how is she going to the bathroom? It must smell She's terrible. She's being in there. fed on Junior's love. Ugh. <laughs> We're having ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> uh Jackie Browski, where can people find you? At one two three Jackie underscore B Jackie J A C Q U E and um, it's the same thing on Instagram without the underscore. Great, uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M A T T L I E B E R M A N. You can also find me here on After Buzz TV on the Defiance After Show. We're having our season finale next week, which is very very exciting. Uh, and if you love sketch comedy, you can go to VLYTV.com. Our sketch, The Founding of Hogwarts, just so went funny. just went on uh, the front page of Pop Hangover today. It's on Geeko System, and it's on Reddit, and set phases to lol. So it's starting to go wide, and we're really happy about that. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching. We'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.